I'm out here today to clean the time trial bike for the event I've got in the weekend. I thought it was time I took everyone through my time trial bike, top to bottom, and introduce you to the bike that I absolutely love. So let's have a quick look at the TT bike in its full race getup. Right, the frame itself is a specialized S-Works Shiv UCI compliant. So there's no crazy nose modules, there's no crazy fuselage. It's a um, seven to eight year old model now. But UCI legal, still pretty quick. So there's the frame itself and what I've stuck with. The only modifications I've made to the module itself are the ski kicks. You can see here, normally they came with stock standard straight outs, but I have gone with ski bends, so it's a little bit more comfortable for the wrists. Group set wise. You can see I'm still on mechanical. Yep, haven't gone DI2. The reason for this, a few years ago, they used to measure to the pivot point, only to the pivot point for reach and height. Now it goes to the end of the mechanical lever, so there's no benefit whatsoever, unfortunately, to be sticking with mechanical. But for simplicity, that's all I run. It's also still 10 speed, which is more than enough for a time trial, if you ask me. Uh, nice big loop on the back here for nice crisp gear changes and another mod I've put here is just a cable tie in here to keep that loop nice and tight. Um, on the back I run an 1121. Now that works perfectly for most courses that we run on. You can see a nice straight block up there all the way back so you can dial in the cadence straight away. Cranks and power meter. That's an S-Works Quark Spider with S-Works cranks and their 175s I run on that. I run 172s on the roadie, 175s to the time trial bike. Saddle wise, a specialized Satiro. Bit of a plank this seat, you can see it's dead straight and uh, not much comfort, but uh, the modification there is just some tape. So if you're riding in the wet, you just don't get water straight up your butt. Um, that's not really an aerodynamic advantage there at all. My sit bones pretty much sit right at the front here, so it's as far forward as you can get. But I found this saddle, I've gone through a ton of TT saddles over the years, but I still like the Satiro. Allows me to get nice and forward, and there's a bit of a gap there for, well, the man parts. Um, bar wise, pretty stock sound and set up in the middle here. So the modifications, I have taped over the holes there, and you probably can't see them in the shadows but taped over the holes there that's not for aerodynamics that's so i don't drip sweat down the bolts and corrode those out skateboard grip tape on the outs and on the outs over here i've got a little bit of gaffer tape there to protect the wedding ring so that doesn't get scratched up now i have no data on if grip tape is any faster but it keeps the line straight through here and doesn't add an extra few mil either side so it's nice and streamlined and we don't spend a lot of time on the outs anyway there is a bit of padding up here for a bit of comfort the Garmin mount, it's a quarter turn bar fly. Mounting Garmin's and mounting computers on TT rig is always quite an interesting task. That one's the bar fly quarter turn mount. Goes on quite easily and sits there. So it sits pretty much in between my hands. Drink bottle, got an Aero one, just because we can. Normally on training, I just put a normal drink bottle on that. Pedals for the moment. The Shimano SPDs, nothing special. I might put the P1 power pedals on that at one point. Um, but as, I, as you saw before, we had the Quark on there. And for race day insurance, we have a chain catcher here by K-Edge. Super light, can save you a lot of pain if it stops, her, uh, stops you throwing your chain off. These are the wheels I'll be running on the weekend. So I've put them on and pumped them up. I might go for a roll around the block to make sure everything is right to go. But the Stinger 90 front wheel, here's an interesting mod. That there is a balance weight. It's a bit of lead put in place to ensure the wheel doesn't vibrate at high speeds. We can do a whole other video on balancing wheel sets, but out of the factory, most wheels are not balanced. And the old trusty Zip 900, I love this disc. Really, really reliable. Over here, you can convert it to a track hub if you spin it the other way. And again, you may notice we've actually put some, uh, some balance weights on this wheel as well to keep things nice and smooth.
So there's the bike as a whole. I absolutely love this rig and that's my standard race day setup with those wheels and that gearing. Now, the bike itself doesn't move very far without me on it, so I guess you wanna see my position. So let me get this thing set up on a trainer and I'll show you why that position suits me so well. So the bike itself, I've straightened it up with the front block after putting it here on the Fluid 2. But this is why I absolutely love this bike. So I'm not in kit, but you'll get the picture anyway. With the hunch in my back and where my elbows go, the ski kicks here are so much more comfortable with the wrist. Rather than be straight and down and have to sort of flick the levers up, frontal area is really where it's at. But I'll show you today why I love this bike in this position. It's just super comfortable when I'm down in race mode. So shoulders in, locked in, and you can probably see there the bit of a hunch in my back. I don't have a flat back, but that's not a problem. So I'm not too arrow in this hat. Let's uh, fix that. Okay. And we're on. I paid near $1,000 to learn this one tip from the wind tunnel. Keep your head down. Simple as that. Most people will ride looking up the road with their heads pointing up. And sure, you may feel quick like that, but moving your head like that, it's a whole other game. So again, a simple head change from here to here with no other position changes at all on the bike and you'll save yourself a ton of time. Okay, that's enough tips for now. Don't want the competition to know what I'm up to. Okay, see you out in the road.